welcome back. We are still on the fruits of the spirit. All right, we have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Today, we've already talked about the first five. So now we're gonna talk about goodness. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. All right, and today I brought a book with me to read. Ooh. All right, so we're gonna get to that. But we're gonna talk first about King Hezekiah and what he did that was, that was good. So, remember that before there were churches, there was the temple, and the temple was in Jerusalem. And the temple, God had specific rules about the temple. There were rules that we had to follow, and it was only for the temple, just temple. Just like whenever you go to church, your parents may have rules for you, like maybe you're not supposed to run, you're not supposed to yell, you're not supposed to get balls out and bounce them. You have to use walking feet and just different rules like that, right? Or maybe you you have to dress up whenever you go to church. I don't know. I don't know what all your rules are. But there are rules for the temple, right? Well, church and the temple. Well, God had these rules and one of the kings, he was a mean, mean guy. He was not following God at all. He disobeyed God's rules for the temple. That's not good. He made it dirty and he took some of the stuff from the temple and then gave it to other people. That wasn't very nice because that stuff belonged to God. That was God's stuff. Well, so God was very upset with that king. And then that king, he, um, yeah, that king, he, he got in a lot of trouble. People kept coming in and they kept um, um, taking people and taking things. And um, so God, God punished him by hurting his kingdom, by hurting the, yeah, his kingdom. Well, anyway, so then he had a son and his son, after, after the king died, his son, Hezekiah, started to reign. Well, Hezekiah started reigning whenever he was 25 years old. Imagine that, being 25. And he was the king. He was the one in charge. Well, he, in the very, very first year that he reigned, in the very first month that he reigned, so as soon as he started being king, he started to help the temple. He started to get it back to what it was supposed to be. So he started putting things back and he told all the priests and the Levites, they're, they're kind of like the pastors. He told them, he said, go in and I want you to get all the dirtiness out of the temple because this is God's place. All right. So he made the whole temple look shiny and brand new and everything was put back in order. How do you think God felt about that? I bet God loved it, didn't he? He was so happy. There was finally a king that was obeying what he wanted, right? Well, so he did all of that in the very first month that he reigned. <coughs> and then they started offering sacrifices. That was the goodness that King Hezekiah showed, okay? Our craft today I'm pretty sure it's a coloring page. It's either a coloring page or you have to color what you think the temple looks like. I don't remember which one. Hmm, I may just put two pieces of paper in there. I don't know. All right, anyway, so that's the craft for today. Other than that, let's read our book. Let's see what this book says about this, all right? All right, so this book is called Maybe God is Like That Too. All right. I live in the city where the sidewalks and subway cars and buildings and bustles are packed with people, but I've never seen God. Have you ever seen God? Hmm. Let's see. Grandma, 
Does God live in the city? I ask one morning at breakfast. Yes, God is here, she says. You just need to know where to look. Whenever you see love, joy, and peace, God is there. Whenever you, when it, wherever there's patience, kindness, and goodness, God is there too. When you see faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, that is God's spirit at work. On the way to school, I'm on the lookout. I see a bus full of tourists and count 10 bright yellow taxis. Do you see all the taxis on there? I spy a man sweeping a stoop and grandma and I laugh when we see a tiny dog wearing a fluffy purple sweater. That's kind of silly. Has he seen God yet? Not yet. At school, Grandma hands me my lunch, and she hugs me close before she says goodbye. That's what love looks like to me. Maybe God is like that, too. Is that like, is that like God giving you hugs? Yeah. On the swing, I pump so hard I see over the wall into the alley. My friends shout, higher, higher, as my feet fly way up into the sky. That is what joy looks like to me. Oh, there's joy. Maybe God is like that too. Outside, car horns blast and sirens scream, but my classroom is quiet and calm. Maybe that is what peace looks like to me. Oh, there's peace. Maybe God is like that too. I try to tie my shoes, but the laces tangle around my fingers. My teacher sits down beside me and shows me how to tie them. That's what patience looks like to me. That's maybe God is like that too. Oops. On the way home, I see a doorman. A doorman is somebody who opens and closes doors for people. He's wearing a red cape and a cap and a hat with a shiny brim. He's holding the door for a man using a wheelchair. The man moves very slowly and the doorman chats with him and smiles. That's what kindness looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. Remember how I said kindness and goodness were really, really close? Let's see. While I'm sit setting the table for dinner, there's a knock at the door. It's our neighbor from downstairs, bringing us a loaf of bread. It's golden brown and warm and wrapped in a thin white towel. That's what goodness looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. Does he give us gifts that we don't expect? After dinner, I work on my homework while Grandma stands at the kitchen sink washing dishes and humming to herself, just like she does every single night. That's what faithfulness looks like to me. Well, how is that faithfulness? Is it because she does it every single night? Even though it's the same thing, it's still faithful, right? She does the same thing over and over again, and that is faithfulness. Maybe God is like that too. At bedtime, Grandma sits at the edge of my bed, singing me a lullaby and stroking my head. She tucks my blankets up close around me. That's what gentleness looks like to me. Maybe God is like that too. I lie in bed watching the curtains flutter. I want to talk about the dog we saw today and how high I can swing, but Grandma says that once I'm tucked in bed, I have to stay in bed until morning. That's hard to do, isn't it? Sometimes it is. I close my eyes and try to fall asleep. That's what self-control looks like to me. Mm, doing what you're supposed to have. Doing what you're supposed to do. Maybe God is like that too. 
I saw God over and over again today, whenever I saw love, joy, and peace, and wherever there was patience, kindness, and goodness, when I saw faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, I saw God's Spirit at work. I don't see God the way I see my friends, or the streetlights, or the river, but I see signs of God's Spirit all around me right here in the city. I know what God is like. Maybe I can be like that too. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Galatians 5, 22 through 23a. Remember, we can be like that when we have God's Spirit living inside of us. We can have the self-control, we can have the love, patience, the kindness, the faithfulness, the goodness, all of it. We can have all of that. And it's not hard work because it's not us doing it. It's God's spirit doing it in us. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and pray. And then I will see you guys at church, okay? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you that you show us all of these different things and that you can help us to have all of these different fruits in our lives when we love you and when you live in our hearts and you are our savior. We can have this too. We thank you so much. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. Have a good week. Bye.